LeeTDickey.com. Do you have an event or occasion coming up that could use a special touch? Perhaps a wedding, a production, a show? Good! Then you're in luck. Haley Moores is who you're looking for. Haley is a makeup artist in the Toronto, Ontario area, specializing in bridal, glam, natural, and special effects. She's incredibly talented, professional, easy to work with, and has a personality that is second to none. To book Haley Moores today, follow her on Instagram at mad underscore malash, that's M-A-D underscore M-I-L-A-S-H, or email her at madmalash, again, that's M-A-D M-I-L-A-S-H at gmail.com. Book Haley Moores today. You'll be glad you did. LeeTDickey.com LeeTDickey.com Do you find yourself reminiscing on what life was like when you were younger? Do your favorite songs, movies, and TV shows instantly take you back to a simpler time? Great! Then you're in the right place. Join me, Lee Dickey, on my new web series and podcast, Yo Nostalgia, where I cover everything you grew up with. From films and toys to fads and trends, Yo Nostalgia has it all. Subscribe on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever podcasts are available. Follow along on social media at Yo Nostalgia Show to keep up on this time-traveling trip. Yo Nostalgia, breathing new life into your memories, available everywhere now. LeeTDickey.com LeeTDickey.com Do you enjoy good conversation? Are you a person with many passions? Perfect. Then the Beats and Speaks podcast is for you. Join me, Lee Dickey, every Friday for stories and interviews about everyday life with everyday people about everyday things. Everyone has a story, and I just want to help them tell it. The Beats and Speaks podcast, your everyday life, everyday stories, everyday people, comedy and entertainment audio joyride. Subscribe and download on LeeTDickey.com, Lee Dickey TV on YouTube, and your favorite podcast app. The Beats and Speaks podcast, available everywhere now. LeeTDickey.com LeeTDickey.com Hey, what's going on, everybody? Lee Dickey here. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Beats and Speaks podcast. Today, I figured I'd give you a fun fact about me, something you may get a laugh at, or at least I'm pretty sure you will, and that is the fact that I startle super easily. I'm no good in movie theaters. I'm no good when it comes to like watching TV with anybody. I'm. And this is probably why I spend a lot of my time by myself but the times that i do go to movie theaters and watch tv with people over and have company i startle if i hear certain things and if i'm not expecting certain things but we'll get into more of why i startle super easily right after i tell you where you can find the beats and speaks podcast of course new episodes of the beats and speaks podcast are released every single friday on my official website leetdicky.com iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and wherever podcasts are available. Of course, we're on YouTube as well under Lee Dickey TV, so please do go comment, like, share, and subscribe. Rate us five stars and leave us reviews too, if you would, please. And thank you if you want to follow along with me and the show. Follow me on social media at Lee T. Dickey. Send your comments, questions, and guest requests to Lee T. Dickey at gmail.com. Calm, but now all that now that all that housekeeping is out of the way, let's get into the main event. Get into why you are really here, and that is the fun fact about me, yours truly, Lee Dickey, right here on the Beats and Speaks podcast. And that fact is the fact that I startle way too easily, super easily. This is going to be fun. Let's get to it right here, right now, on the Beats and Speaks podcast. All right, so yes, I startle super easily. Let's get into that. It's true. I startle way too easily. I always have. I suppose it's because I've always been very sensitive to loud sounds. I don't know. And and I've mentioned on this show before that I have a disability. I have uh, cerebral palsy, spastic diplegia, which means I have it in both of my legs. And my motor skills are affected, so I don't know whether or not that plays a part in it or not. But I'm, I'm very 
active when it comes to like if I get startled, just kind of like I'm very jumpy, right? And that's always been the case. I remember remember one specific incident when I was like I don't know seven. Uh, the elementary school that I was at, we went the younger grades, so I would have been like in the second grade at this time at this point. We went to a haunted house that was just up the street from the school and it was run by the local fire department here in or one of the branches of the local fire department here in toronto canada where the show comes to you from and so they had a haunted house it was all decked out like it was pitch black in the fire house and just the you know the fire fighters were all dressed up in halloween costumes and i'm just wearing my regular school clothes school uniform i think at this at that time and we went with i think we were paired with some of the intermediate grades so like grades seven and eights at that time where they basically had to help us get through the the um the haunted house and it was it was interesting to say the very least and i thought well okay let's just do that go from there like I was excited to go, even though I knew before we went in that I tried to play it off like I wasn't scared, but at seven years old, you're pretty much scared of everything, including your shadow. And I thought, okay, let's just, I'll put on a brave face because I actually wanted to go in and I wanted to experience it because it was Halloween, you're a kid, whatever. So we go, and as I said earlier, and I've stated several times on the show, like being disabled and having cerebral palsy, my balance isn't that great. So, like, if somebody reaches out and grabs at me, chances are I'm going to fall over. And that happened several times in this haunted house. Plus, like, it's supposed to be scary because it's Halloween, haunted house, and people were, you know, the firefighters that were dressed up, they're grabbing at you, right? They're coming out of the walls, they're coming out of the floor, and every single, like, nook and cranny of the firehouse that we can't see because it's so pitch black in there and they've got like strobe lights going it's pretty much like a it's almost like studio 54 but if it were like sucked into a black hole kind of with like the halloween theme going the you know john carpenter movie and it it just i don't know you know people grabbing at me and I, i fell over must i must have fallen over about at least four or five times and I was so spooked by the time we were done. Like, halfway through, I, I wanted to go. But I'm like, okay, we're almost at the end. Just hold on. I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm done. Like, I, I must have taken so many falls and so many bumps just in that haunted house. I probably built up a callus to falling over just in that one trip alone. So I think the, the first fall that I remember taking in that haunted house was actually on the stairs in the haunted house because there was somebody there was like a hole in the wall where somebody could reach their hands through and grab at you so somebody got me by my ankles and just kind of pulled so i automatically went over and i was like oh you know and it wasn't fun like i was ticked off because nobody likes to fall over like and i know it's a haunted house you're meant to have fun but at that point i'm just like you know, don't grab at me. I don't want to fall over because having, you know, then I have to get back up and then we have to do this again. And once you're in there, it's not like they can just escort you out. You legitimately have to go through the whole haunted house. I'm trying to put on a brave face, even though I'm telling them like, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go. And, but I'm just like, you know what? Let's just get through it. I'm ready to just, at that point, you know, once I fell over the first time I was like, okay, whatever. I know it's probably going to happen again because there are things just coming out of everywhere at you. So by about the fourth time of me falling over, there were people behind me getting sick of me falling over. But, you know, there are people coming out of the the walls at me and like my balance isn't that great. So obviously I'm going to topple. And even the person I was paired with was probably getting annoyed and a bit sick of having to basically guide me through the haunted house. To be honest with you, I didn't say you had to volunteer for this. So that was on you, bro. But we got to the end and I was just ready to be o- to have it be over with. Because I was just sick of A, getting grabbed at, B, falling over. And I was just sick of everything around me at that point. But, you know, that will go to show you 
a bit of how easily I startle. Just if you come up behind me and I'm not expecting anything and you're like, boo, chances are I'm going to jump because I'm incredibly jumpy anyhow. And that's without any sugar in my system. So there's, you know, haunted houses that are probably no good for me, even at my age now, some near 25 years later. But, you know, it is what it is. And movie theaters are the worst for me. Movie theaters, forget like that haunted house story, because that's pretty bad all in itself. But movie theaters for me are the absolute worst. Okay? Movie theaters by far are the absolute worst. I will go, I'll go to a movie to maybe get some enjoyment out of it. But more often than not, because I rarely go by myself anymore, because I'm just not into going to see mainstream Hollywood sort of blockbusters. I'd much rather watch a made-for-TV movie, a documentary, or even a homework film. And those are episodes and topics for episodes in and of themselves. But if somebody invites me to go to a movie, depending on who it is, like I go for the company, not so much the actual entertainment value of the movie, but I go for the people that I'm with. So one of my best friends, and I've known him well, he's my best friend. I've known him about 17 years. We met in about the ninth grade. And, you know, we've been friends ever since. We go constantly to movie, to movies these days. Like, he'll suggest it because, to be quite honest with you, I barely pay attention to what movies are brand new or the hottest releases or in theaters anymore. So he does a lot of that stuff. Or, like, if I see a commercial, in power, a commercial or a promo in passing, I'll mention it and we'll go. Or if, say, his brother's in town and they want to include me, then we will go. What I'm like in a movie theater, it doesn't matter what type of movie it is. It could be a thriller, could be a horror flick, could be a um, action movie. Does not matter. Could be a rom-com. If there is a loud noise in the theater, even if it's in the, a trailer, like, you know, the, before they get to the actual feature presentation, you have, like, 20 minutes of trailers if it's in a trailer i'm not expecting it i'm gonna like i will bounce out of my seat i will it's like you ever seen sort of like an episode of jag or top gun where they have to like eject yeah you pull the rip cord that's me without the rip cord if i hear like a loud noise or a loud bang in a movie theater well in a movie right whether it's a trailer or within the actual feature film itself boom I'm like, I'm hitting the roof. I can give you several instances. Um, Beowulf was one, just because it's not my cup of tea. Like, movies like Beowulf that are basically like horror films or thriller films, it's not really something I would see. Like, don't get me wrong. Sure, again, like I told you, or like I said, I go for the the company of who I'm with. If I, uh, you know, if it's not a movie I'm particularly interested in and I'm there for the company... I'll sit through about an hour and a half or a two-hour movie, right? But if I get startled, I get startled. You know, there were certain portions of that film that just I was bouncing all over the place. Just wanting to, I was like, okay, how much longer? I, like, I'll look at my watch and go, all right, how much longer in this theater? Because what I'm like in a movie theater, aside from like pulling a ripcord and ejecting out of my seat and going through the roof of the auditorium there, is... If you've ever been in traffic and it's moving at a snail space, it's crawling and you really have to get somewhere or you're just wanting to get somewhere and you're gripping the steering wheel and you got white knuckled, it's white knuckled. I'm like that with the armrests of a chair in a movie theater, right? I, I am absolutely white knuckled because I'm just like, I don't want, here's the thing. I don't want to get startled. I don't want to get spooked, but this just, that's just part of my, I guess, genetic makeup or like part of my disposition or whatever what have you i just i will startle like there was a, a scene in i mean the the entire movie itself i and i saw this in high school and the movie just kind of like spooked me and made me a bit uncomfortable probably because i was just not used to seeing things like that like edward norton is a f fantastic actor i mean ed furlong's in the movie as well american history x i just was like i you know, because it, it's not something I would have seen. It's not, you know, I knew it came out a few years prior to me actually seeing it for the first time. But that movie just kind of spooked me. 
Fight Club did too, you know, and I saw both of these films when I was in high school for the first time in a uh, media studies class that I was taking. And they both just spooked me because it's just, it's not something that I would usually see. Like my viewing habits are sort of action, like martial arts films, action films, rom-coms, uh, buddy cop films, that sort of thing. And I, I much pre more prefer like a documentary film on how things are made and it's something I can learn from. Like, yes, don't get me wrong. I'd like to be entertained as well, which is what I hope I'm doing for you guys with this podcast, the Beats and Speaks podcast, and my other show, Yo Nostalgia, by the way, you should go subscribe. Please do all those links and information down in the description. Uh, yeah, I could go to be entertained, but if I go see a movie and go to a theater or I watch a movie with somebody, I'm there for their company. I'm there because of who they are, not because of what we're going to do or what we're going to see or, you know, what's going to happen. It's just, I'm not big into like the coming soon or this is the major summer blockbuster that you must see that everyone else has seen already and you're late to the party not that i care about it anyway but it's just i'm not big into you know widely released films and things like that and you know fight club and american history x sure okay you could learn something from them or you could be entertained by them but if I hear loud sounds and loud bangs, like, I am going to hit the roof. I get spooked. I'm, I get so startled, and it's just, I want it to be over, right? But at the juncture, I mean, with those two films, American History X and um, Fight Club, I saw them in my English media studies class. I'm not going to tell the guy or, you know, tell the teacher, hey, I'm a bit spooked. You know, can you shut it off? Like, I'm, I'm not going to do that because there are, like, 29 other students behind me and i'm just like okay whatever i'll just i'll sit through it and i think i will come up at that juncture you know at that point i came up with creative ways to try and avoid as much of the movies as i could which basically meant sir can i go to the washroom or whatever sir can i go to my locker yeah, like you want me to give you a report on the movie sure i'll tell you what i'll do i'll go watch it on my own time i'll go find it or i'll watch a trailer and then i'll tell you what i think because Everybody knows you want to see the best bits of a movie, just watch the two-minute trailer or whatever, what have you. And they will give you the best bits of the movie in, like, the two-and-a-half, three-minute trailer. So there was that. American History X, Fight Club, not something I would normally watch, right? It's just it's not something that's in my wheelhouse. It's not something that I would want to sit through, not something that I'd want to put my full attention into and or like my brain my eyes that's not something i want i want to see right at that juncture or even now i don't want to have i don't want to rewatch those films people might love the films but it's just it's not my cup of tea right like i'd much rather watch back to the future war games with matthew broderick my favorite film is the blues brothers i even love its sequel blues brothers 2000 Okay, I'd much rather watch things like that. Just I want to laugh. I want to have a good time. I don't want to have to get into like serious thriller drama kind of things. I mean, there was another bit. I think it was Law Abiding Citizen with Jamie Foxx where there's a scene in that movie where a judge picks up her phone and it explodes. It's right next to her head. It explodes and like shrapnel or whatever goes everywhere and into her skull and it instantly like kills her it's just that's just a, a, something i didn't fit i didn't uh expect so that was one of those things I'm like oh i'm uh i'm going through the roof like don't get me wrong i thought it was a good movie law-abiding citizen with uh, i think it's gerard butler and jamie jamie lee fox but you know when i saw that uh, in the movie where she opens the phone and it just kind of explodes and instantly kills her i don't think anybody expected that so that was another thing that made me incredibly jumpy and sort of like hit the roof in the cinema. But I've never been able to just kind of relax in a movie theater because I know, I think the, what it is, is the volume of the movie. We have it at a normal volume. Like I, I here's the thing. I don't, for the life of me, I can't understand why it seems that 
the volume of the movies are just a bit loud for my liking when you go to a theater. So, like, if you could just, maybe my ears are super sensitive, I don't know. But it, if they just turned it down to a sort of normal volume, like you're watching it at home, then I have no problem. Like, I've never been to a drive-in. I, it's one of those things that I'd actually, I'd want to, uh, I'd want to achieve or want to accomplish or I'd want to do at some point in my life. I've never been to a drive-in. And I know there's one out in Oakville, Ontario, which is probably, I don't know, on the, uh, Short end of the stick, probably about a 45 minute drive away. Some maybe at some point could be like anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on where in Oakville this the closest drive in is. I can't think of another one that's any closer, but yeah, I just you know, those are certain moments in films where I startle. It's just it's loud bangs and loud booms, and just loud sounds, I suppose, just because my ears tend to be super sensitive and I'm just not expecting things. So whether it's me not paying attention or just me not expecting things or my ears being super sensitive, I'm not sure. And then there was, you know, that uh, friend of mine who's one of my best friends. We've known each other 17 years. He's admitted to me, and, I, and we get a good laugh out of this now, that half of his enjoyment when we go to a movie is not only the film itself, but it's my reaction to the sounds and the movement within the uh the movie within the film so i th it's just because i'm what white knuckled and i'm at the i'm like tense in a movie theater doesn't matter the genre loud bangs loud booms loud sounds forget it does not matter i am i'm gonna bounce out of my chair and i'm gonna hit the roof one other instance that i can think of off the top of my head is that same friend and I think a couple other friends and myself, we all went to see, and this is one of my favorite Jim Carrey films, by the way, even though it scared the bejesus out of me. It was um, the number 23, the thriller that he did back from 2007. There's a part in that movie where I think it's listed in the credits as the suicide blonde. So the blonde jump, and I'm not expecting it, the blonde jumps out the window. I don't know how many floors up she is, but she, the minute she hits the ground, because I'm not, or like, you don't see her falling at all. You just, he, I think Jim Carrey is walking along and then you just boom, you hear a boom or a bang. It's the blonde, the suicide blonde on the ground because she apparently just jumped out a window and you don't see her falling. You don't see any shot of the window itself. You just see, you hear boom, blonde on the ground. And I think Jim Carrey just kind of looks back and is like, hmm. And when that blonde girl hit the ground, I legitimately jumped right out of my chair and, and stood straight up. I, I could not. I was like, oh, I'm, you know. And everybody, like, that saw that within probably the first five rows, probably busting, busting a gut laughing. Because I, again, I startle way, way, way too easily. Whether that's just because I'm not used to certain things or I'm just sensitive to certain things or I'm just really sensitive to really loud sounds. And as I said earlier, I tend to think that the volume of the movie in the theater is a bit too loud, but that's just my opinion. But there you go. What happens when I startle easily? The stories of why I startle easily and how easily I do startle. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Beats and Speaks podcast. Of course, I am your host, Lee Dickey. Please do find us on your favorite podcast app and player of choice. Rate us five stars and leave us reviews too, if you would, please. And thank you to get in touch with me and the show. Send your emails, comments, questions, guest requests to leetdickey at gmail.com. If you want to follow along on social media, please do that as well, at leetdickey, of course. All information is in the description down below. But thank you again for listening and tuning in this week. We will see you all and talk to you all next Friday for a brand new episode of the Beats and Speaks podcast. Of course, I have been your host, Lee Dickey. This has been the Beats and Speaks podcast, and I will talk to you very, very soon. All right, you all have a good one. We'll talk later. Peace. Lee 
ptdickey.com.